friends welcome to the tutorial series on network analysis made simple friends for those who desire to get mastery over the network analysis subject i felt that clear understanding of basic circuit concepts matters a lot so i selected basic circuit concepts in network analysis as the topic in this golden jubilee tutorial of mine friends in this tutorial few basic circuit concepts simple strategies and thinking process are explained clearly and lucidly hope this tutorial ignites some of your thoughts and helps you to enhance your confidence friends you know the concept is something conceived in mind thought or a notion it is an abstract or generic idea from particular instances while solving electrical networks we come across circuit situations such as zero voltage zero current open circuit short circuit and so on in some other situations we may have to open or short the circuit elements or a branch close or open the switch make voltage or current source zero sources may deliver or absorb power and so on under all such situations what will be the effect due to such changes are to be visualized clearly in fact clarity of these make network solving simple and enjoyable friends first consider the open circuit concept consider a simple circuit shown in figure you see that the resistance r is connected across a voltage source of e volts in series with the open switch k as shown the switch k is considered to be an ideal switch you know an ideal switch offers zero resistance when it is closed and infinite resistance when it is open so current in the circuit i is equal to zero as k is open current through the switch k also is equal to zero but what is the voltage across a switch how will you find it friends it is very simple i will explain it for you observe the connectivity of the voltage source with the terminals of the switch positive terminal of the source v reaches to the one end of the switch similarly negative terminal of the switch of the source v also reaches another terminal of the switch through resistance r note voltage across r is equal to zero since i is equal to zero so the voltage across the switch vk is equal to v volts now observe the facts around the switch k the switch k is open current through it is zero voltage across it is v volts or we can say finite hence open circuit concept states that a zero current and a finite voltage imply open circuit hope you understood it next we shall take up short circuit concept consider the same simple circuit but this time the switch k is closed as shown therefore you know the current i in the circuit is equal to v divided by r amperes so current through the switch k also is equal to v divided by r amperes as the loop is closed now but voltage across the switch v k now is equal to zero as the switch offers zero resistance so observe the facts around the switch k the switch k is closed current through it is v by r amperes or we can say it is finite whereas voltage across the switch v k is equal to zero so the short circuit concept states that a zero voltage and a finite current imply short circuit very very interesting isn't it friends friends next we shall take up another interesting concept of effect of zero current through the branch of a network 
consider the circuit shown in figure. It has two independent voltage sources V1 and V2. It has three junction nodes A, B and C or D. Note C and D are one and the same node. There are five branches in the network. Let I1, I2, I3, I4 and I5 be the respective branch currents. Let Va and Vb are the assumed node voltages as shown. By writing the Kirchhoff's voltage equation for the branch 2, we get Va minus I2 into R2 minus Vb is equal to 0 from which we get I2 is equal to Va minus Vb divided by R2. Now, forcing I2 is equal to 0, we get the circuit shown in figure. By substituting I2 is equal to 0 in the equation for I2 obtained earlier, we get Va is equal to Vb. What does this mean? If the current through any branch is 0, the potentials of the end points with reference will be equal. This results in effect as though the branch is open. Recall the open circuit concept you have learnt. A zero current and a finite voltage imply open circuit. Hence, the network transforms into a two independent loop network. So, current through R2 and R4 will be same. And similarly, current through R3 and R5 also will be the resulting loop current. Hope you understood it. Friends, next we shall learn the concept of forcing voltage source 0. Consider the network shown in figure. The network has one practical voltage source of V volts in series with R1 and one practical current source of I amperes in parallel with R2. First, let us consider forcing voltage source 0 as shown in figure. Observe the network. The voltage source voltage V is equal to 0, yes, but there could be a finite current IV due to another source present in the network. So, this situation is similar to a zero voltage and a finite current which implies short circuit. So, when the voltage source is forced to zero, it is equivalent to short circuit. Note, the series resistance is left as it is. Similarly, next consider the concept of forcing current source to zero. Consider the same network taken earlier as shown in figure. By forcing current source 0, let us see what happens. Observe the network where i is equal to 0, but visualize that there could be a finite voltage across the current source may be present due to other sources in the network. So, this situation is similar to a zero current and a finite voltage which imply open circuit. Hence, when the current source is forced to zero, it is equivalent to open circuit as shown. Is it interesting? Friends, you know the independent sources could either be voltage source or current source. In the independent sources in general, the magnitude of the voltage supplied by the voltage source or current delivered by the current source are not dependent on any other parameter in the network. Whereas, dependent source voltage or current depend on the voltage or current in any other branch of a network. So, these sources are called as dependent or controlled sources. Controlled sources could be voltage controlled voltage source or simply VCVS or voltage controlled current source or simply VCIS or current controlled voltage source or simply ICVS and finally current controlled current source or simply ICIS. Here 
Vx and Ix are the voltage and current in any other branch of a network. Friends, now let me explain the process of handling these sources. One, the independent voltage sources can be connected in series and they can be added or subtracted depending on their polarity. For example, consider the sources shown in figure. 4 volts or 10 volt sources are connected in series and their equivalent is plus 10 minus 4 equal to 6 volts. Observe the polarity of 6 volts. It is in the same direction as that of the source of a larger magnitude. Similarly, current sources connected in parallel can be added or subtracted depending on their direction. For example, 6 ampere and 4 ampere current sources are in parallel and their equivalent is 2 amperes. Observe the direction of 2 ampere source. It is in the same direction as that of the source of larger magnitude of 6 amperes. Here, understand that only sources of the same type can be added or subtracted. You cannot add or subtract dependent source with independent sources. This you keep in mind. Friends, I hope you know the voltage source can be converted into equivalent current source and vice versa. But understand that this conversion process can be carried out both on dependent and independent sources if they are convertible. What do I mean? by if they are convertible. Friends, voltage source is convertible only if there is a series resistance or impedance in series with it. Similarly, a current source is convertible only if there is a resistance or impedance is present in parallel with it. For example, consider the circuit between the terminals A and B. There is one practical independent voltage source of 10 volts in series with 2 ohm. This is convertible. Similarly, a voltage controlled current source of 8 V1 amperes is in parallel across 3 ohm resistance. This also is convertible. By converting this dependent current source, we get 8 V1 into 3 which is equal to 24 V1 volts in series with 3 ohm as shown in figure. Further, 10 volts and 3 volt sources are in series, so their equivalent is plus 10 minus 3 equal to 7 volts with the polarity shown. Further, you see that 2 ohm and 3 ohm are in series and their equivalent is 5 ohm. So, here we have reached the end of conversion process. We cannot add or subtract dependent and independent sources. This you should keep it in mind. Friends, next we shall learn another concept of source delivering and absorbing power. Consider the voltage source shown. If the current leaves the positive terminal of the source, it delivers power. On the other hand, if the current enters the positive terminal of the voltage source, then it absorbs power. Similarly, consider the current sources. If the direction of the current and the polarity of the voltage across the source is oriented in the same direction, then the current source delivers power. Whereas, if the direction of the current and the polarity of the voltage across it are oriented in different direction, then the current source absorbs power. Hope you understand it. Friends, next we shall solve few numerical examples to, to emphasize the concepts we have learnt. Consider an example to find the short circuit current ISC after short circuiting the terminals A and B in the network shown in figure. Friends, if you have understood the open and short circuit concepts learnt earlier clearly, 
you can solve this problem without pen and paper within few seconds i will tell you how consider the circuit after short circuiting a and b terminals as shown as a result vx becomes zero the voltage controlled voltage source of 3 vx becomes zero it is then equivalent to a short circuit this results in 15 ohm and 1 ohm being short circuited hence can be eliminated then is is equal to 5 volts divided by 2 ohm which is equal to 2.5 amperes it is so simple isn't it friends friends before i explain the concept of voltage rise and voltage drop across a passive element i prefer to explain a mechanical analogy of constant velocity water flow in a canal as shown observe the figure you see plate a is there in the canal when the plate is stationary the velocity of water before reaching the plate is constant let the water level be maintained at level a as shown now let us move the plate against the direction of water flow what do you expect friends water level rises to position b as shown on the other hand if the plate is moved along the direction of water flow say from position b to position c what do you expect to happen now friends now water level drops to position c as shown so what did you learn from this if the plate is moved against the direction of water flow there will be a level rise and it can be taken as positive on the other hand if the plate is moved along the direction of water flow there will be a drop of water level it can be taken as a negative friends exactly this analogy can be applied to identify the voltage rise and voltage drop across the circuit element consider a simple electric circuit shown in figure you know in this simple circuit voltage across r is equal to i into r volts but the point of interest now is to understand when there will be a voltage rise and when there will be a voltage drop now in comparison with the experiment explained earlier current here is similar to water flow plate can be considered to be tracing the circuit either in the direction or against the direction of current flow now if you trace against the direction of current that is from b to a there will be a voltage rise and i into r can be taken as a positive i into r similarly if you trace the circuit say in the direction of current flow that is from a to b there will be a voltage drop and i into r can be taken as a negative so as a thumb rule to find the voltage rise or drop look at the direction of you are tracing the circuit tracing in the direction of current flow will be a voltage drop hence take negative tracing against the direction of current there will be voltage rise and take a positive but when you trace active element such as say a source if you trace from negative to positive take positive and if you trace from positive to negative take a negative so now if you trace this simple circuit in the clockwise direction that is from a to b to c to d to a we get minus i into r plus v is equal to zero and if you trace the circuit in the anti clockwise direction that is a d c b a we get minus v plus i into r is equal to zero you see that both equations are the same hope the concept of voltage rise and voltage drop is clear to you friends next we shall learn the concept of kirchhoff's current law applied to a cascaded network we know that the kirchhoff's current law is applied to a junction point in a network 
but it can also be applied to a cascaded networks observe the cascaded networks shown in figure currents i1 and i3 are entering the network n2 and i2 is leaving it so kirchhoff's current law applied to cascaded network states that the algebraic sum of the currents flowing towards a cascaded network is zero or sum of the currents entering the cascaded network is equal to sum of the currents flowing away from the network that is simple so according to kirchhoff's current law applied to cascaded network is shown i1 minus i2 plus i3 is equal to zero or i1 plus i3 is equal to i2 friends next we shall consider a simple numerical example to emphasize the concept we have learnt to find the voltage across 15 ohm resistance in the cascaded network shown in figure observe the network we know that current in a passive element flows from a higher potential point to a lower potential point so current in 5 ohm resistance equal to 10 volts divided by 5 ohm that is equal to 2 amperes will enter into as shown similarly current in 1 ohm resistance equal to 5 volts divided by 1 ohm equal to 5 amperes also will flow towards n2 so according to kirchhoff's current law applied to cascaded network n2 current flowing towards n2 is equal to 2 plus 5 and that is equal to 7 amperes so 7 amperes current must flow away from n2 so voltage across 15 ohm resistance is equal to 15 into 7 equal to 105 volts with the polarity shown hope you understood it friends next we shall solve another interesting problem to find open circuit voltage voc in the circuit shown in figure observe the network the switch is open then il is equal to zero so current controlled current source of 5 il amperes will be zero it is equivalent to open circuit because il is equal to zero no current will flow through 2 ohm 1 ohm and rl hence voc appears across the current source of 5 amperes by writing nodal equation we get voc minus 10 divided by 2 minus 5 is equal to 0 by solving it we get voc is equal to 20 volts it is so simple isn't it friend next we shall solve another example to find voc and isc in the network shown in figure observe the network the terminals a and b are open so ix is equal to 0 this results in current controlled current source of 0.5 ix to become 0 hence it is equivalent to open circuit so no current will flow through 10 ohm and 5 ohm hence voc is equal to 40 volts that is very simple friends next we shall short circuit the terminals a and b the circuit drawn by short circuiting it is shown in figure now ix will be present and in fact ix is equal to isc by writing the nodal equation for node v we get v minus 40 divided by 10 plus 0.5 ix plus v divided by 5 is equal to 0 but you know ix is equal to v divided by 5 by substituting and solving we get v is equal to 10 volts and isc is equal to 2 amperes friends finally let us solve one gate problem in this problem it is given that 60 volt source is absorbing power and we are required to identify the value of current source i out of the given 10 ampere 13 ampere 15 ampere and 18 ampere sources so that 60 volt source absorbs power friends 60 volt source absorbs power meaning current in branch ab enters the positive terminal of 60 volt source 
So, by writing Kirchhoff's current equation for the junction B, we get I plus I 60 volts is equal to 12 amperes. That is simple. So, sum of I and I 60 volts should either be equal to 12 amperes or less than 12 amperes. So, we have to identify the current source of less than 12 amperes from the given sources. Hence, the right answer is 10 amperes. Friends, I hope you are now convinced that understanding the basic circuit concepts and applying them for network solving makes a solution simple and network solving becomes a pleasure. I am sure this golden jubilee tutorial has ignited some of your thoughts. If so, please forward your feedback and suggestions to my email. Thank you for watching this video.